The great philosopher René Descartes once said, I off-road, therefore I am. And man in his eternal quest for meaning has grappled with the eternal question. Land Cruiser 76 or Troop Carrier. I'm Andrew Cynthia White. Join me as I share my passion for building four-wheel drive trucks and then travelling to the remotest parts of the world. The Land Cruiser 78 Troop Carrier and 76 Wagon are based on Toyota's utilitarian Land Cruiser 70 series. Body styling comes from models first produced in 1984, including the first generation Prado and second generation Troop Carrier. The Troop Carrier's wheelbase is 2980 versus 2730 for the station wagon, a 250mm difference. The Troop Carrier can carry up to 12 people in some configurations with three doors, and the wagon, five people with five doors. The similarities between these two light four-wheel drive trucks are mostly quite obvious, but the differences become very significant as soon as one owns and operates these vehicles. When the 76 wagon was first introduced in 2008, I was living in South Africa and I actually got one. It didn't have this engine in it, it had the 1HZ underpowered six-cylinder engine in it and I went to the press launch and one South African journalist summed it up absolutely beautifully when he said you've really got to want one and what he meant was if you don't know what this vehicle is all about you'll look at it and think $76,000 for that you've got to be kidding me no effort has been made to modernize the dashboard. There are no flashy lights, there are no twinkly LEDs. It's all very plain and ordinary and very functional. The best part about it, actually, interestingly, is the steering wheel. It's plain, but it's modern and it's a nice thing that you... Steering wheels, to me, are very important because you have to look at them a lot. The rest of the dashboard. The hi-fi system is ordinary functional. Heater controls, ordinary functional and extremely old-fashioned, but they work. Other switches, ordinary and functional is the only thing I can actually think about. There's nothing wrong with them, they all work, but there's no bling at all. Which is part of what makes the 70 series Land Cruiser so appealing. It is utilitarian, it is basic and it is functional and that's its appeal. The driver's seat. The most important seat in the vehicle. They're not bad these seats but they're not great. They're, they're not as good as uh, certainly not as good as similarly priced SUVs, in fact not even as good as SUVs at close to half the price. The seat mechanisms of course are good old-fashioned levers, and there's one down here that you grope for and slide backwards and forwards, and in fact this slides far enough back for quite a big person to be comfortable in this vehicle. The back seats, like the front seats, are firm, don't give a whole lot of support, a bit bench-like, and as this is a five-door, five-seater, the big test of whether it is in fact a five-seater is the comfort of the middle. <clears throat> back seat space. There is actually a lot of room in the back here, particularly headroom. But I don't quite understand this model. The troop carrier is known, it's called a troop carrier because it's supposed to carry 12 people. You can you have benches in the back and lots of people facing each other for short trips, lots of people. But this is the GLX model which comes with a bench seat at the back. So that idea is out. So why would you buy this model, only two doors, over the 76 wagon if it isn't for the enormous boot that you get in the back of this Otherwise, I see no advantage between this vehicle and the 76 wagon. I would put my dog here, yes, but not my child. It's not a five-seater. A, it's a narrow vehicle, so five adults are not going to find life particularly comfortable in the back. 
two will be fine, two plus child, fine. So it's a five seater at a stretch. The ride is not great. It's typical leaf spring at the back. It's very firm. So what are these two like to live with as touring trucks, four wheel drive vehicles, recreational vehicles? I've owned both of these vehicles. I've actually had two troop carriers. So which one is it? They both got five seats. This one's got three doors and that one's got five doors. Truth is though, when it comes to the ride, there's nothing in it. But for camping, things are completely and utterly different. How, what a big deal, I mean, is this extra door a big deal? Well, for a passenger in the back, yes it is. Because while you'll have similar space in the back of that, you've got to, of course, come through the front door by tilting the seat forward and only the passenger seat has a slider, the driver's seat has not. So everybody in the back has got to get out the front door. Bit of a pain, yep, it is. But for two people, the fact is that that extra door in the back allows such excellent access, because in this case we've actually removed the back seats, I've got such good access to all my kit in the vehicle that I don't have here. I mean, I can open this window, sure, but it, it's quite a small opening. So the biggest sim single problem with the troop carrier, without a question, is access. And I talk a lot about access in building vehicles. Access is important to get to your stuff easily and quickly. Know where it is, easy to find. That is why I put these gullwing doors in my troop carrier. Does it go all the way? No. This is still better. And in fact, what you can do with a 76 is you can actually have these cut out and made in going, going openings as well. So now you've got, I mean, unbelievable access. Far better than you can ever do with a troop carrier. But if I had to take the two, choice between the two, I'd take the troop carrier any day. And this is why. I can climb inside because the trippy is actually a van <clears throat> which means that I can deck out the inside and actually climb in and out of it. In fact I don't even need a rooftop tent. I can just create a flat area and have a very large flat area to sleep and a lot of troop carrier owners do that which is you can do the same with this but because of the height this height difference changes the vehicle completely. For two people, having fridge sliders and things like this in the troop carrier like this is actually not taking advantage of the space inside the troop carrier. And what I've done with mine is I've had those drawers come out inside. I can access almost as much equipment from the back of my troop carrier and even more when I get inside. And of course the ultimate practical use of the troop carrier is what I've done here with this conversion. The entire roof has actually been cut out, so there's my bed. So pitching it takes literally seconds, putting it away takes literally seconds, and if I can get into it like this, I can get out of nasty weather. And that to me is the single biggest reason why the troop carrier as a camper is superior to the 76. If it wasn't for this voluminous space used like this, then the two are a bit of a tie, aren't they? But to me, this advantage is all the advantage I need. And now, if I compare the amount of usable packing space in Troop Carrier versus 76, again, if I'm using it for to, to for two people. There is so much packing space in this truck, it's more than double. Three times, four times, maybe five times the packing space in terms of accessibility. If I didn't have these gullwing doors, I would have to climb inside every time I wanted to get to the fridge. That's annoying. 
So again, while the troop carrier is ultimately the better camping vehicle, you actually have to do a lot more work to get a troop carrier right than you do a 76. If somebody asks me, Troopy or 76, I say Troopy immediately, because I, I have fallen in love with the troop carrier. I never did the same with the 76. The 76 configuration is ordinary, five doors, uh, but to make the most of it, you don't have to do that much. Cargo barrier, nice drawer system, and a few things, and you've got it pretty much as far as you can go. With a troop carrier, however, you can go actually a lot, lot further, as you've seen. For example, that's a Max Trax table. They're not there at the moment, but I can carry four Max Trax, and it's my lunch table. And now, if I want to make a cup of tea, I can make a cup of tea and everything is accessible. Yes, you can do the same thing with a 76 at the side, at the back. You can't fit this, it's too short, but you can do a similar thing at the back to ease access there too. But somehow the troop carrier has so much more scope for development than the 76. And that is why, for, till the end of my days, I will always love the Troopy. <laughs> I'll be alright.